Cool. Okay. Right, so let's give a warm welcome to our next speaker here, Situ, who's going to be talking about squeezing water from the stone corn shell in 2019. Good morning. Welcome to this talk. Uh, let me start with a quick question. How many people in this room are C programmers? Raise your hand. C programmers. Do you program in C? So let's start with a sequence. What does this code do? It prints something. What does it print? Unix. It prints Unix on SAD out. If you don't understand this code, it's fine. It was the winner of IOCCC competition in 1987. And when it won the competition, it was termed as the best liner, one liner ever received. It was written by David Korn. Trying to maintain corn shell is like trying to debug this type of code. Very smartly written code, very hand optimized code, but it's very hard to maintain. So what this talk is about, it's about AT&T corn shell. I won't talk about MKSH or PDKSH, and it will be a very brief status, status update from new upstream maintenance, that's me and Curtis. And it will be very shallow. I won't take a deep dive in the details. My name is Siteshwar. I work for Red Hat. I maintain Bash and Cone Shell at Red Hat. Uh, I used to be an upstream maintainer of Fish Shell. And I also contributed to some other projects like Selfish OS. And currently, I'm upstream in KSH. So what is Cone Shell? Uh, it's a very old shell. Uh, it, it used to ship with Unix. And it has it's very old. Like it, it, the early, first version I came out somewhere in the early 80s, and its initial implementation was based on original bone shell. So the first question that comes to our mind is, if it's so old, why try to keep it alive? So let's have another quiz. This is a valid bash script, and there's a bug in this script. What's the bug? It should be trivial if you have programmed in Bash. OK. The bug lies inside this assignment. Bash will fork the last uh, command in a separate process, and this variable will be lost. Why I'm showing you this code? Because if you run the exactly same script in KSH, it will work as expected. And it turns out that even though corn shell is slightly older than other shells, it still has a better language specification. It has support for discipline function, namespaces, compound data types, enums. It has better project compliance. And it, it is still the fastest project shell. Why I say this? Let's look at an example. This is a simple script. It runs a for loop like 10,000 times. And it runs a subshell inside the for loop. Bash takes like 2.9 seconds, G shell 2.4 seconds, Cone shell takes 78 milliseconds. It's so fast. But no one uses it. Why no one uses it? A few months ago, I was writing tests for built ins, and I came across this bug. And I reported this bug in upstream. And when I reported it, someone responded on this bug report saying that exact same bug was reported 20 years ago to previous maintainers. They never fixed it. Why I'm showing you this bug? Because this is not the only one. There are many such bugs in the code. And I came in the scene somewhere in mid-2017, and this was the situation of KSH upstream back then. Previous developers have left. Code base, code base goes all the way back to the 80s. It, it has old tooling, no revision control history, no comments in the source code, tricky code, bad test coverage, lots of old bugs. Everything seems wrong about it. How do you deal with it? How do you maintain the unmaintainable? And the answer is very simple. Don't change anything. Because the code is tricky, and test, your test coverage is bad. Every time you attempt to make a bug fix, you will intro, introduce new bugs. So how do you deal with it? Don't change anything. And do, any, do only critical bug fixes. And if you care about stability, this approach sort of works in practice. It, because 
if you don't change too much code, there's a very less chance there will be regressions. But this approach comes at a cost. It kills your software slowly. So how do you, how do you bring upstream to a healthy state? Let's choose some goal and start working towards the goals. Our top priority is that we want to create a modern but backward compatible version of Conshell. We want to make it easier to contribute. We want to improve its tooling. We want, to, we want better policy compliance. Conshell is largely policy compliance, but still there are some gaps in its compliance. We want to fix, fill those gaps. And we want better test coverage. In short, we want to bring this code base to 21st century. How do you deal with it? How, how, now let's work in towards our goals. Kane Thompson once said that one of my pro most productive days was throwing a thousand lines of code. Uh, we took this, this advice very seriously. We threw away more than 500,000 lines of code. We dropped almost 80% of the code. What did we drop? Uh, this, this is some statistics. Uh, the last version of Conchel that came out from Bell Labs had, had more than 660,000 lines of code. And currently in upstream, we have 137,000 lines of code around. So what did we drop? It, it turns out that Conchel is not, was not a single package. It was a sub-package of a bigger package called AST. And AST had all these things. And KSH was sort of dependent on, the, on, on these functionalities. It has support for non posix operating systems. It has re-implementation of lots of POSIX functions. It had internal subsystems like VMLock. It's a memory subsystem. It had its own AST-specific local subsystem. We threw it all, all of it, like 80%. This, this was constituting almost 80% of the code, and we just threw it away. We just took out the core sub-package, uh, the sub-package, KSS sub-package out of this code. And we also threw away the old build system. The old build system was a combination of build system called NMake and a feature detection system called if feature exists. The build system was complicated. No one knew how to debug it. Builds were slow. We threw it, threw it away and we switched to Meson and we, ma and we managed to improve our build times by more than a factor of 30. Old build system used to take more than five minutes to build KSH. Right now it builds in 10 seconds. That's a decent improvement. So you are left with 20% left with of the code. What do you do with it? Start refactoring it. For example, look at this code. Can anyone make some sense out of it? It seems to be doing something strange, but it's doing something very simple. It's doing this. It's, it's checking for paths under slash dev directory. We refactored it. So it's checking for paths under slash dev, go to slash dev ft, if, and otherwise, if, if the path is uh, std and stdr or stdr, and take some action based on it. What, what you see on the previous slide is apparently it's a micro optimization, and it was useful maybe somewhere in the 80s or maybe early 90s, but we can just rely on compiler optimizations now. Uh, we care much more about readability. And this code is much, much more easier to maintain. So let's, so this is another tricky code. Corn shell is full of such tricky codes. What about this if condition? What does it do? So the first, first condition is checking for an attribute, whether an attribute is set. Uh, whether either uh, and we are, uh, it's checking if either one of uh, it's checking if either and we will just or and we are just attribute is set but not both like the second condition doing something strange it's actually it will actually fail if both the attributes are set uh, this is my favorite comment in the source code this should never happen guaranteed by design and god sacrifice it was actually happening there was a bug in this code. We had to fix it. Don't rely on code sacrifices. Always test your code. And we need more developers. If you like to work on crazy problems, try to refactor this code. Uh, our source code is hosted on GitHub. And the name of repository is AST. It's not KSH due to historical regions. We appreciate any patches. We care about stability, so we need better CI. And this is our Travis dashboard. We test every commit on Fedora, OpenSUSE, Ubuntu, Debian, 32 boot Ubuntu, macOS, and all the internal scripts are run through Shellcheck. We also test on FreeBSD. Uh, 
Travis does not does not support FreeBSD, so we had to set up our own custom CI. And right now it only supports FreeBSD, but I hope we'll be able to add more operating systems there. Maybe OpenBSD, NetBSD, and some variant of Solaris in future. Uh, how does our test coverage look like? Um, our test coverage is currently hitting 65%. Uh, it's not a great number, I'm not proud of it, but it used to be worse. And in last one year we had added hundreds of new tests. And this number is slowly going up and it will get better in future. We also run some third-party tests. There's a debug debugger called KSHDB, uh, which had some tests. It's written in KSH, and there's a shell called Yash. It had some set of POSIX tests. We run all these tests in upstream. And Red Hat has hundreds of internal tests, tests for shells, and we execute all of these tests on every upstream build. Um, Currently, these tests are not public. We have some plans to make them public, but there's nothing concrete yet, but maybe in future. <laughs> and we need more testers. If you want to help us in testing, please do. Like, Please test, help us in testing in upstream build. We appreciate any testing, whether it's manual or if you want to help us in writing unit tests. We have put a strong focus on defects identified identified by static analysis tools um, so we are, we have fixed warnings identified by clang analyzer or gcc warnings and we, we also run covariate in upstream this is the covariate defect rate graph it's slowly going down our defect rate used to be about 2 around a year ago and it's currently around 0 0.6 And last but not least, we made it simple to try. Uh, we are doing builds for RHEL and Fedora in Copper. Uh, if you use RHEL and Fedora, you can subscribe to our repositories. Uh, if you don't use RHEL and Fedora, if you use OpenSUSE or Ubuntu, uh, you can subscribe to our OBS repositories. Both Copper and OBS repositories are updated on every, every commit in upstream. And we need more testers. Like upstream, there are hundreds of Linux distros and there are different BSDs. We can't deal with every one of them, so we need help. Help from. Uh, we need help from packages. Um, you don't have to be a crazy packager. You have to. Uh, it's very easy to build KSH. You have to run these two commands and it should be ready. The build should be ready within 10 seconds. Um, this is my last last slide, and I'm going to ask a very relevant question. And the question is, is it too late to make a change? And the answer to this question is really a matter of perspective. It's really up to if you believe in making a change or not. In my previous slides, I showed you a 20 years old bug. Uh, this is the fix for the bug. We fixed it after 20 years. And this shows the attitude of current maintainers. We don't care if a bug is two days old or two decades old. We just fix it. And we realize that we have taken over, over a very big problem. It, it seems like an impossible problem. Like, 30 years old code, no Git history, bad test coverage, tricky code, no comments in the source code. It seems impossible that we'll be able to deal with all these problems. And it seems, seems impossible that we'll ever make a release. And it seems impossible that people will start using KSH again. But in reality, when things start happening, impossible slowly becomes possible. Thank you for listening. Thank you.